Quotient rule shortcuts. The uh, quotient rule shows you how to find the derivative of a function that comes in the form of a fraction, which is what a quotient is, a fraction. And you can see that even for relatively simple problems, the quotient rule gives you some pretty complicated answers. If you don't like doing the quotient rule, and most people don't, you'll be happy to know that there are ways to avoid using the quotient rule. In some circumstances, there's actually a quicker and easier way to find the answer that involves not even using the quotient rule at all. So that's what I'm going to show you here, which means we're not even going to use the quotient rule, so let's just get that out of there. The only derivative rule that we're going to need for these examples is just the power rule. Here's two examples. Start with the one on the left. Derivative of x cubed divided by 5, what's that? Well, before you just uh, dive in and take the derivative, you should notice that when you divide by 5, that's really no different from multiplying by 1 fifth. So if you rewrite the expression this way as 1 fifth times x cubed, you'll find that you no longer have a quotient rule problem. It's just a plain old power rule. This 1 fifth times x cubed behaves no differently than any other constant, like 2 times x cubed or 7 times x cubed. And you should know what to do with that. The answer, when you take the derivative, will simply have the same constant coefficient. And it will be times whatever the derivative of x cubed is. So y prime equals 1 fifth, that doesn't change, times the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. And you're done. You can uh, tidy it up a little bit. 1 fifth times 3 makes a 3 fifths. But that's the answer. Here's a similar problem, the difference being we have a constant in the numerator now instead of the denominator. What do you do here? Well, it's actually very similar. You find a way to rewrite this denominator so that it's no longer dividing. And in this case, when you divide by x squared, that's just the same as multiplying by x to the negative 2 power. So that's an easy way to just change this into another form. It doesn't even remotely resemble a quotient rule problem now. It's just another power rule problem. The derivative of that, of course, y prime equals 4 times the derivative of x to the negative 2. Multiply the negative 2 in front. Subtract 1 from the negative 2 to give you a negative 3 power. And once again, you're mostly done. You can uh, tidy things up a little bit. 4 times negative 2 gives you a negative 8. You could leave this x to the negative 3 the way it is, or you can put it back into the denominator with a positive 3. Take your pick. You know, either way works fine. So what is it about these two examples that makes it so easy to avoid the quotient rule? Well, maybe you've noticed in both cases we have a quotient, but in this case the denominator is just a constant. Over here the numerator is just a constant. When you have either this or this, you can always bypass the quotient rule altogether and either do things this way or do things this way. The only time you really should use the quotient rule is if you have a function of the variable in the numerator and the denominator at the same time. Even then, it's possible to avoid the quotient rule by playing the same sort of trick, but it's probably not worth the effort because it, it gets more complicated that way. So this approach will work for any functions that come in this general form of a fraction with a constant in either the denominator or the numerator, even much more complicated looking functions than we have here. Now, of course, more complicated functions will involve more work, in particular when you have a complex, I should say complicated function in the denominator, you may find yourself raising the whole entire denominator to negative 1 and then using a chain rule or something. But even then, it'll still be quicker and easier to do it this way than to use the quotient rule.